intercom glue and water-based adhesives and the machines. In this video, we're gonna take you through the four machines that we're now stocking from, from intercom and talk to you about the, the differences between each. And then we're gonna take you down to our production environment and show you this I380 machine in use and, and how you set it up and use it. In brief, Intercom, based in Italy, they were the first to manufacture water-based adhesives over 20 years ago, and they are still the only company that manufactures both the glue and the machines. That is a huge benefit because they have designed these machines around the glue, and so a lot less service, a lot more efficiencies and effectiveness of their systems. Now let's look at the systems. So the IO48, this is simply a tank, a compressor, and a gun. There's no bed for this one. It's versatile, you can move it around, you can use an existing bed ventilation system if you have it, or if you're just simply using it on a tabletop with some quick application, it's great. So this system, just like all the others, comes with a tank. This is the compression tank. So the glue bags, in these boxes, there are two of these 10 liter glue bags. This will unscrew and there is a piercing system. So the beauty of Intercom too is you don't pour the glue into this bucket. This whole bag goes directly in. So you are not creating a mess. Dirt in the bucket, old residue is not gonna get into your system. It's a very clean process. So this will go inside of your system. You will clamp this down and you will need a, a compressor. See the product details on what size compressor we recommend and what you'll need. Um, it, it's pretty small. So once you hook this up to your compressor, You've got a couple dials here on the side, just like the other machines. And you've got your intake, and you have got the nebulizer, which is what sends the glue to the gun. So the first three systems, these come with what's called the G9 gun. This is great for small application from just about a millimeter to two inches in width for the spray size. This has got the trigger system. And that's the IO48. The I388, this has a 24 inch by 15 inch bay. And you can also flip this on, on top so you can actually change the angle of the ventilation system. This has the G9 gun, same as the IO48. It has a retractable wire. And this has the three intakes. So it, it also has the tank down here and it has a foot pedal. So each of these bays come with a foot pedal and a trigger system. And so you can use either one, um, it's kind of your preference. And again, about a millimeter to two inch width. And we're gonna get, we're gonna show you this one in the production environment down at the shop. Also for this system, there is a ventilation. So underneath this, there is a layer of filtration. You do get filtration with all the systems. And there should be one on top of here as well. We didn't put that on yet. So this is inside and underneath, just like the other systems, here's the vent. And so on the back side, there's the exhaust and you can either cap it with a piece of filter or you can vent it out. You really don't need to vent it out, just the cap should do just fine. And power, so there is a small electrical requirement, 220. So we send it to you like so. We do not have a plug cap on it because depending on your production facility, you may require different outlets, different plugs. If you're using 110, you can, but you need to use a converter to bring it down to 110. So you will need to hire an electrician unless you know how you do it, know how to do it yourself. The I-288 has a 43 by 22 inch bed. It also has a back ventilation system. So these are held on by magnets. So it has, it has the base ventilation under the, under the bottom here, and it also has a backside ventilation. It has the same gun as the previous I-388, the G9, and a retractable system. This has the same tank, same foot pedal, has a bed here, and it's also adjustable. You can, you can raise or lower the height of the bed here. And finally, the I-998, which has a 69 inch by 29 inch bed. So this is the big one. This has got a huge bed. These are probably 65 inch straps, um, go the full length. You can use bigger pieces on here as well. The I-998 has a dual fan system. So there are two fans, two exhausts on the backside and it has the G6 gun. So this allows you to go from a half an inch up to eight inch in width. So if you're spraying large kind of sweeps back and forth, this is gonna allow you to apply a lot more glue in a bigger area quicker. 
It also has a couple of extra dials here for tuning in exactly how wide your spray is. And finally, it has the moving arm. Just like the other, you've got two switches to your two fans. So you could just be powering one fan if you prefer. Um, same tank, same foot pedal. So we're down here with my brother Ted. He runs our production facility for leather goods here at Buckle Guy. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk about how we use the I388 spray booth. So take yeah. it away. So prior to using the spray booth, we were doing all glue application by hand with the brush. So switching over to this machine was, was a huge game changer for us. It just sped up the operations so much. It's more accurate. It's easier for our operators to use um, and allows us to just cover way more product, surface area and edges just all around just a great machine and highly efficient. The, the reason we have all these machines is essentially because Ted was using them for the past couple of years and it kind of explained to us the efficiencies of this for small crafters up to huge production facilities. And what we want to talk about is kind of the install process. So we've got this hooked up to an air compressor. Ted's got a few systems hooked up to ours here, but you can go to the hardware store. You can get a small air compressor. You don't need anything elaborate. So the air compressor hooks up, as we showed you earlier, to the tank. That's going to pressurize your tank. And we've got a few dials back here. The first dial, this is your air inlet. And so we have got this hooked up to about six bar. Now we do have instructions and kind of best practices for the systems for each of these dials that you can look on the product page on. So Ted's got this at six bar for the, for the inlet. On the tank, the connector, this is pressurizing the tank. Ted's got this to about 2.2 bar. And the nebulizer, which is taking the glue from the tank to the gun is also at about 2.2. So why don't you show us some of the uses? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a bunch of different ways you can set up the machine. It all depends on what product you're making or spraying onto. Um, so what we have set up here is for our some coasters. So we're gonna show you how to glue the perimeters as if you're gluing wallets. And then we're gonna do large applications. So we're gonna open up the diameter of the spray gun and we're gonna cover the entire surface of it. So the way you're gonna do it uh, or spray the glue onto it, you have two options. You have the gun right here where you can pinch this in and squeeze it to, to have the, the glue release and spray onto the leather, or you have the foot pedal down here. What's also nice about this machine is that it's hooked up to this pulley system up top, which really helps with operator fatigue uh, over the course of a day. For us, we have one or two people switching off in intervals, spraying this gun for anywhere from two to four hours. Um, so having this really helps, and especially with this, uh, the pinching of the trigger, although it is preferred for like smaller surfaces and getting the tight, tight, like, tight areas, uh, the pedal just helps so that all you have to do is aim and push your foot down. Um, so it's, it's really easy in that sense. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is uh, narrow the diameter. How we're gonna do it is by tightening the screw up here. So the way we like to do it is we start from zero. So I do this clockwise all the way and I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna spray. So right now it's not spraying anything. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off a little bit while it's spraying until I start to get a little bit of glue. So you can see there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of play with it until we get the exact diameter. What also comes into play, uh, a big factor is how far away your gun is from the surface of the material. So the closer it is, the smaller diameter, the farther away, the larger diameter. Um, so there's those two variables when you're tightening this. So I'm gonna bring it out a little bit more so what I'm going to show you now is what that surface area looks like. It's coming around. See, that's very fine. So I'm going to open up a little bit more and I'm going to come off a bit. So now you can see how that's nice and big, just like that. So how much glue is too much and how much is not enough? So in terms of how much glue you want to use, what you're looking for is you're looking for a kind of a consistent white surface so it's not too blotchy. What you'll see is if you have your air set too low, you'll have uh, too few aerosols. Um, so that means it's kind of blotchy and it's kind of spraying like a little patch effect. So what we want to aim for is just to cover the surface, just like you see right there. Um, and then of course, depending on how much you need on there, one pass should suffice. Again, you just want to cover the surface of the area and that's sufficient glue. So I'm going to show you is, you know, how accurate it can get if you're spraying the edge of a leather or any product. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come around as you see right there, that's perfect. Um, when you're applying glue, do you, would, and you, say you're connecting this piece to this piece, will you apply glue to both of the pieces? Right, so using this water-based leather glue, it's different from 
you know, the glues you'd use in elementary school. What we have to do is we have to spray both surfaces and then let it tack. So what we're doing is we're spraying it on the glue, then we're waiting about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, as soon as that 10 to 15 minutes comes, um, comes up, all you have to do is kind of touch the surface of the glue and it'll stick to your hand. Um, and that means it's tacky enough for it to apply. So now that we've showed you how to do a small diameter, which is mainly used on edges, uh, we're gonna show you how to use it uh, in a large diameter for larger format applications. For instance, if you're doing a laminated belt, if you're putting two square foot panels of leather together, you're gonna open up the diameter of the spray gun and spray the entire surface of the material. So what we do here is we're gonna do it counterclockwise to open it up. And at the same time, we're opening it up, but we're also gonna spray farther away from the material as well to help expand that diameter as much as we can. Um, so there we are, counterclockwise. Now we can come over the entire material and cover the entire surface. As opposed to hand application where you're kind of gobbing it on, it's about five times less use of glue when you're using this system as opposed to hand application. So you're saving five times the amount of glue by, by spraying. Another benefit of the intercom machines is that right before you start and right when you finish um, pressing down on the trigger, it releases a slight bit of air. So you're not gonna get a clog at the end of the nozzle. So when you start again, it's gonna be a clean flow right at the beginning. And one other point about cleaning is, is we'd mentioned that really you don't have to ever clean water-based glues out of the system unless you're going to let it sit for really up to six months. If you're going to let this sit for a month, you can come back in a month without using it and it's going to run just like it did before. If you are going to let it sit for you know, up to six months or so or you don't know it's going to be a, a long time, run water through it. You'd put water into the tank and you'd run the system through the water and so that would clean, clean the lines. Another thing that I saw when I just came down was what Ted and his team will do is they'll prep work. And so you can move on and off. So as opposed to finishing your job and removing it piece by piece, they set up rack systems. And so we'll remove this one off and the next one will go on and so forth and so on. You can use it like this or you can create a, a metal grid underneath it so that the air can pull through, but it's a firm surface so that it's easier to remove on and off. So you can stage your work in, in, in batches. So for us, whether you're looking for a machine for sample making or actual production, this is a perfect tip with off machine that you can really use for anything. That's basically the demonstration of how the machine works. So thank you, Ted. Thanks for coming by.